Hello, so this is a small pharmacy management system uh, which is named as Pharma System. So let's log in. And let's log in with Invent Credential. Login. Add guest. So it's invalid. So it throws an error. So let's log in with that username and password. Remember me. Login. So now you are redirected to dashboard. So this is the dashboard, <clears throat> and you can add a new user from here. Make a new purchase, not a make a new purchase, but register a new purchase. Make a new sales and be restocked. Similarly, here are notifications. Currently, uh, 13 items are expired. Let's check it out. Hmm. So, these are the 13 items which have been expired. Now, you can check here in the checkbox and generate their uh, returns detail. So, what does it give you is Name of the items, batch number, and the purchase date, and supplier from which you purchased on the date, on these dates, and also the quantity expire. So you can also print out these, uh, save it as PDF, Excel, or copy the data. Let's go to purchase. Let's see suppliers. You can add suppliers and see the list of suppliers. Uh, you also have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 10 suppliers. So you can choose from here. Okay, currently there are only 10 suppliers. You can delete them. I don't want to delete that. So let's get back. You can add a new supplier using get new. You can also <coughs> decorate this using. A uh, box, but I left it as it is. Go to create new and create a new supplier. Uh, let's make a new supplier XYZ PPLI supplier. Blah blah blah. Now create. So we have a new XYZ supplier. Now let's go to purchase history. So you can also edit the suppliers and also delete them. So we have here the list of supply, list of purchases made. So these are the purchase slip number and that's that's 23. This 23 is the I believe supplier ID. It must be yeah. This is supplier ID and this is the bill number. So. So you can see this is the bill number and this is the uh, supply ID. Why is it done this way? It is because uh, the bill number may uh, may be same from different suppliers, but bill number followed by supply ID won't be same. So. This is the purchase ID altogether uh, combined, and this is from whom we purchased. So, this 23 would be the ID for Pratik. So, here you can see Durga Drugs have ID of 3, and similarly, here is also 3. So, I made a purchase on this date from Pratik of amount so, so and so with discount of these tax of these and grand total would be was this and I made the payment and these are also the dues that need to be paid we can also search by anything if we search by supplier name Pratik we have two entries one is due that's not good so we can also edit them, see more details. What so if this is the grand total purchase made, so what are the items we purchased? So for that, go to details. 
So these are the items purchased under that transaction. So <coughs> all paid is a description, and here are the items purchased for that with the uh, with for transaction hundred minus minus twenty three the purchase ID so and so. Let's get back. Uh, let's see the edit. So, okay, let's edit entry for Pujan and let's change due to paid, unpaid to paid and save it. So now it's paid as you can see here the green flag and we have pagination. We can also search by dudes and also paid items. So these are the functionalities for list of purchases. Let's go to new purchase. So here are the flow is a you bring a uh, stock from supplier and under the purchase ID and you have to register what you bought from so and so supplier so okay I bought uh, so many things from XYZ supplier which have purchase ID of 1 and date is today is September 7th no okay I bought in 5th so I bought item item 1 best number 100 quantity 100 cost price 5 selling price 1 now so that's a problem because selling price have to be greater than cost price okay so let's go to selling price and it should 10 and expiry date let's change this to September to November December okay 4th and add to list now you have here in the list similarly you go to teardrops best number 200 quantity 50 cost price 10 selling price 20 expiry on December 31 31st at the list now we can next so total amount would be 1000 this is totally a pure data entry so we have to enter what's listed in the uh, so this have to be total totally data entry so you have total amount of thousand and you get hundred percent hundred rupees discount and tax of this as you 13 rupees then you have paid you had paid this much so put remarks but on credit maybe so it's a credit now submit successfully done okay now if the page reloads again so here we are now let's go to inventory uh, manufacturer item and generic names are similar to uh, registering suppliers so let's go to stock see the stocks the stocks we have so these are the stocks and the personalities are all the same Similarly, the, it also have certain functionalities. <coughs> Others to have certain, but I didn't so because I forgot. Okay, let's quickly go to sales. Uh, let's go to new sales. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. <coughs> I want to buy a teardrops. Ten teardrops. It has fifty. Okay. Go to list. Again, go to list. I want to buy this too. Go to list. Uh, list. So I have updated few items. Okay, I want Airbird too. So I have five quantity in my stock, and I put six. So I'm not allowed six by here. <coughs> it does client side validation. I can't enter more than five. Okay, fine. One. 
Now, if I try to, since this is client side validation for quick reasons, so as viewers have to be quick, I didn't do server side validation because it would take a lot of time. So, what if I want item one again? So, the problem is you have to remove from here. There are two items, item one, because they are different stocks. So, if I want 46, only five quantities, then I can't take it again. What happens is it asks you to remove from the stock and re enter. Okay, fine. So, I'll remove this from the stock. See, the, it does other calculations for you. So, 46 again. Now, I want only two items. So, I will add to the list and see how it gets updated. <coughs> so, it's updated. Now, let's, you can also quickly search here for whatsoever you want. Um, on a process. So, here we have a browser. You can also search by Mason names or by expiry dates and thing. So let's click on next. So we have total of 9390 rupees. If I <coughs> give 5% discount, the total payable amount would be so and so. And if the user pays me 10,000, well, suppose 9,000, then I have to return him. 9.5 rupees. So just click on done. Now it generates the. <coughs> sorry. Now the snippet is generated. And if I click on print, then I don't have printer. So this is what you'll get in print to you. Okay. Similarly, this. Okay, let's get back. Now let's see in our let's see in our dashboard. So now sales has increased to twenty five thousand two hundred and sixty rupees. Uh, this is sales for September. <coughs> today is September and today is September seven. So these are all for sales. Now we also have sales history. You can see here what if what what if you want okay this is the recent sales made and uh, the person comes and wants to return the sales so you can click here and go to sales return page and this is where they can make the sales return so quantity taken is ten you can a five and it <coughs> auto calculates the associated amount and again okay we also want to return this so let's see now it generates return summary now it returns the generates this <coughs> summary as the total total <coughs> would be 120 100 plus 20 is 120 but I have given them 5% discount so it's 6 rupees so it deducts 6 rupees from 120 and altogether I have to return them 114 rupees so this is how calculation has been made similarly let's see the list of sales return <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm not too well today. So, uh, this is the recent sales item made. If you see the details here, you can see the two items. Okay, let's go to report. Let's go to stop. You can also see below the stock that expires within three months. Okay, these are the stocks that that should expire within three months of time similarly you can also add batch number now so if i'll add batch number then only this item should be visible to me so it is so this is how you can filter the 
search and also you can save to excel print or pdf okay you can also save them as pdf or save to excel or copy uh, let's go to this way we have daily sales monthly sales yearly sales and purchase support okay so daily sales for this is daily sales for today maybe okay yeah this is for today and we can we can also search daily sales for any time let's see for november trip if i made any no there wasn't november first okay there were sales so let's go to user management there are not much options only you adding user and assigning them roles so these are the <coughs> users these are active users and those are inactive users every time you create a new user you can create a new user here and assign them any role either admin or staff and uh, what it does is I have used SendGrid uh, API and this sends email confirmation to the user email account and he have to verify at first and then he is able to log in so this is this is all for farm assistant hope you like it thank you and I shall log out Happy coding.